Welcome to InfoWars Nightly News, the hardest hitting news show on the internet today. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and today's date is Wednesday, May 30th, 2012. And here's a look at what we have in store for you today. Tonight, full spectrum coverage from the secretive meeting that is Bilderberg 2012 as the elite's cloak of secrecy is unveiled in Chantilly, Virginia. Meanwhile, Bilderberg launches an unprecedented security crackdown in response. Then, another First Amendment right gets crushed, this time in Wisconsin, as a pastor is sentenced to two years in prison for saying it's okay to spank your children. Plus, Jonathan Corbett joins us via video Skype to discuss the expansion of the TSA. From airports to subways, trains, buses, the open road, and now even music festivals in Detroit. And if you don't like it, then don't leave the house. All that and more coming up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Before we jump to our main news stories, I just want to show you some of the stories that were featured on InfoWars.com today. First off, EU Titans to address Euro crisis at Bilderberg. And this is from Paul Joseph Watson. Apparently, head of the European Council, Herman von Rumpy, will be at this year's Bilderberg conference, and he's going to be meeting with the head of the uh, European Central Bank to talk about how to handle the Euro crisis situation. So that should be interesting. They're going to be planning your lives under cover of darkness, essentially. Next up, Greens demand Bilderberg confab be made public. G Green Congressional Party candidate Joseph D'Affaria of New York is demanding that the Bilderberg conference be made public. And he said, this is a Rockefeller construct. It would be imprecise to call it an organization because although it, it, so -called, it has so-called regular attendees every year, and he mentions those, they have no offices and no specific location or headquarters and they meet by invitation only. So, of course, he's finally woken up to the fact, and hopefully other people who are running for office have woken up to that fact, and they will demand that when these people meet on our soil that their meetings be made public because we have a right to know what's going on in our country, especially when our own elected officials are going to meet with these people. Also, uh, the drone shot down over Texas video has gone viral. That was nice to know. It's got over 100,000 hits so far, so be sure you check that out and spread that around. It's got some great shots. Uh, some great explosions, and uh, be sure and check that out. Over 100,000 views already, so this one's going to be a big one. And finally, there is a video posted on our YouTube channel. Bilderberg has Alex Jones thrown out of Marriott Hotel, and this is the day before the official kickoff. Alex Jones and crew are officially kicked out of the hotel by the manager on the premises, stating that a renovation was underway. So, yes, they took their reservations, they did all that nice stuff, but then they went ahead and kicked him out anyway because they ran his name and decided, wow, we don't want Alex Jones here ruining our conference with the elites from around the world. We're going to go to that video real quick, and then we'll be right back with more news. Oh, these are the guys I want to talk to. Yeah. Hi. How you doing, Mr. Jones? Good. How you doing? What's your name? My name is... Uh... Scott, I'm Alex Scott. Jones. Nice to meet you, Sergeant. Yeah, I've met you last four years. Ago. Oh, cool. Yeah, you guys were real nice. Yeah, so. I thought I was actually in America for a while. <laughs> oh, watch out. We're going to go over here. You're over here. Um, right now, uh, management want to go in with them as far as... Uh, sure, sure. And, yeah, it's their property. So if they don't want you on the property, that's their choice. Sure, sure. Well, they haven't asked us to leave yet. Yeah, I know that. Fact, they, I, fact, but they, they're going to be around. I just came exactly. to reach you. It, just, exactly. Yeah, thank you. No, no, that's why we okay, came to you, okay. because they've got sec private security grabbing reporters. I talked to one of Guardian reporters yeah. this morning. Grabbing them, getting in their face, and then saying, we just want you to know we're going to have a machine gun. I, I respect your old right. No, but I'm saying yeah, yeah. their people are, are, are masquerading as bonded local law enforcement and tell me, we just want you to know we've got machine guns. And so we want to let you guys know their little intimidation stuff, obviously, is illegal in what they're doing. They're breaking the Logan Act as well, but we are obviously nonviolent and are planning to peacefully cover this as a media event. And then, if, you know, as soon as they tell us to leave, we'll go as well. I respect that. And, and, and we, if you don't mind just waiting right here, I'll have someone from the management come here and do exactly that. What, have they already come out and, and They're going us? to. They're going to talk to you right now. So I, but I just kind of got ahead of them. Okay. So, okay, okay, fantastic. So, okay. Oh, so that's what was going on for 20 minutes, and they were just waiting for us to go. Well, you're, like you said, you have a right until management says something. And like you said, I, I well, I the head manager, you, 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 Mr. What's his name? Ryan Saltz. 
Yeah. Brian Stoltz told me I could go have one of those board Wellington hamburgers. Oh, there you go. <laughs> what time is it? we got to get on the radio at 11, 12. It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's actually... It's 11. It's, uh, so why don't you change it to, uh, to, to uh, Eastern time? <laughs> Where are you guys from? Uh, uh, I'm from Austin, Texas. He, he's from Brooklyn. And he's from Houston. Yeah. I've talked really fast for Mike from Texas. I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> yeah, all I've had is some Starbucks coffee. So where's your uh, radio show? Uh, it's syndicated. It's on over 100 stations. XM 166. Uh, number one on the internet, too. You know the Drudge Report? DrudgeReport.com. They carry that stuff. And I've done a show with Jesse Lazaro, Conspiracy. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I've done uh, a bunch of other stuff. <coughs> well, we're here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, oh, Bilderberg didn't exist, the New York Times said just four years ago. Remember, they said I was here in this parking lot imagining Secret Service talking. Remember that? The New York Times thinks you're an idiot. They think we're all morons. Well, these guys are really scared. When I told Stoltz I was recording that conversation, he grabbed his pants. Yeah. He just hurry up and get out of here. I'm going to get a taco or something for it on here. <coughs> this is going to be absolute gold. You know what? I knew there was a taco place, I just forgot. Because they had some plain clothes guys, I don't think it was Fairfax County, follow us last year. We started following them. They ran in the taco place and went to the bathroom. Uh, I mean, I, I, it's not like we bite or something, you know. Be rest assured that won't be me. Okay, no. <laughs> now I can tell local police it's their territory. Like, Look at this inspection sticker. No, no, it was, it, we found out it was Marines uh, from diplomatic security. One of them was a colonel, got like a 50-something colonel. Oh, hey, I'll let you make sure that's what I'm I'm like, oh, no, that's all right. I go, I've got a trip where you're a Marine, and they're like, oh, okay. His face went up in the internet. And they got in trouble. I was taking the doctor. It's one thing on the border. We all know their secret operations. Controlling all the goodies the banks bring in. Here we go. Still streaming. Is this Mr. Stoltz? Hi. Hey, Richard. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. How's it going? Pretty good. You are? I'm Alex Schultz. Nice to meet you, sir. How can I help you? Uh, well, we are guests at this hotel, and I just got into town, and uh, they had told me that they were getting a room somewhere else. Uh, unfortunately, the hotel is having some renovations done, so we don't have any. Oh. We don't have any rooms for you, and I believe Mr. Stoles <laughs> did tell you that. And being private property, the restaurant's not open today, and we don't have any rooms for you, so I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Okay, I'll, well, I'll go. Can I get my voucher for my room? The room has been taken care of for the first night over at... Okay, can I have a map state. for it, please? Sure, no problem. I'll be right back. Thank you. Can you please stop supporting me? Well, I mean, we're, this, is a, this is a public commons. This is semi-public no, commons. Property where are the signs are getting filmed? Because we're... We'll leave if that's the case, but I need you to have me a courier deliver it over to my other place. This is, look, this is private property. I don't understand why you're filming me and why you're taking pictures of the hotel. I'm well, like, we were I'm guests that were booked leave. here, and you told us we are leaving, sir. You're not leaving. Yeah, we are. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you your We will leave when you hotel. give us that, and we'll be out there bullhorn in the Bilderberg group off your property the entire time. I won't be back on your property until four years later when you have it here again if America still exists. I bet they don't even give these guys bonuses for doing this. You just tell them you're going to well, they tell me they're going to fire them. These guys have the have a corrupt mafia that runs our government behind them, and they feel so powerful while they're, oh, I'm with the system. Oh, so the way his expression totally changed totally pathetic. You, uh, mentioned Bilderberg? Yeah. You know, from smile to frown. But they told him, you know. Cause it is, it, cause, because they're still playing the old game where it doesn't exist. They're still telling the public it doesn't exist like they're idiots. It's a renovation. It's a renovation. Just, no, I booked it three weeks ago, but they have a renovation. 
I can't believe it. I, I, I've been kicked out of the hotel. I need my voucher. That's all I want is my voucher. <laughs> and then as soon as we get that officer, we'll get out of here. There's nothing like this live stream. See, that's a key. We weren't in the building. We were in a public commons at an at a area that is advertised as if it's a greeting point. Inside, he could have made us turn it off immediately. Yeah. There's no perception of privacy right here. Inside, we couldn't tape him. There's our old room up there, remember? Mm hmm Okay, we're not going to be back in there for a while. I want you to stop that and hit some good shots before we go fast. And don't forget, you can see that in other videos, including live videos that they've shot um, on our featured section under these two titles. Here's the first one, live video from Bilderberg 2012, or you can also search for Bilderberg Breaking News. Both of those in the Infowars.com featured section will list all the articles, all the videos, all the links to all the live streams so you can stay up to date and spread that around with your friends and let's get the media involved. Send these to the media. Demand that they cover this. De demand that they make it a top priority on their news. Even if it's just local news, we need to shine light on these roaches and that's the only way to do it is to make it public to everyone out there. Now let's move on. Agenda 21 to be discussed at Bilderberg Confab. The attendance of Alberta Premier and global warming alarmist Allison Redford at this year's Bilderberg Conference, during which she will discuss the ecological challenges, confirms that Agenda 21 and the bid to rebrand the sh stuttering climate change power grab will be a core issue at the elitist confab set to take place tomorrow. According to a government news release, Redford will meet with a number of individuals to discuss topics like monetary policy, ecological challenges, and responsible development of natural resources. You know what that means? Those are all code words for humans. Get off the land, stop using it, go back to the Stone Age while we fly around in helicopters and hover ships above you, and maybe we'll throw you some breadcrumbs. That's what Agenda 21 is. So Canada, you guys are now involved. You should call up the Alberta Premier Office uh, of Allison Redford and tell her you don't want her meeting with this trash and if she does, we want to see the minutes of it. We want to know exactly what she was talking about, and we want to see him. Next, Bilderberg launches unprecedented security crackdown. I've actually seen video of where they're already putting fences around the entire wooded area around the hotel area. As you drive in, it's got a wooded area around it before you get to the actual hotel grounds. Bilderberg has launched an unprecedented security crackdown on the eve of tomorrow's secretive confab of global power brokers. With guests at the Westfields Marriott uh, and Washington Dulles Hotel being intimidated by talk of machine guns and high-tech surveillance. Surveying the scene at the hotel today, radio host Alex Jones described a chaotic picture with, of, with Bilderberg security, including a particularly vocal Swedish woman stomping around the building announcing that machine gun nests were being set up in anticipation of a deluge of protesters arriving over the next few days. So we just showed you that video of Alex being asked to leave. And this is ridiculous. You know, threatening people who are obviously peaceful protesters with machine gun nests. I mean, where are we living? East Germany? Obviously so. So that, you know what that means? We need more people there. We need 10,000 people there. We need 20,000 people there. We need to make this a giant event to show the people out there, the sleeping, the sleeping giant that is America, that we know what's going on and that there is a shadow elite group of power brokers out there who is discussing things behind the scenes and we need to be made aware of what's going on. Now moving on to some other news. Uh, this is out of the Independent. Israel hints it may be behind the flame super virus targeting Iran. That's a big surprise because we already know they were partially behind the Stuxnet. A top Israeli minister fed speculation that the Jewish state could be responsible for a powerful new virus said to have been used in a fresh attack on computers in Iran and elsewhere in the Middle East. That's right. It includes uh, Palestine, Sudan, Syria, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt, in addition to Iran. Moshe Yalan, Israel's vice prime minister and strategic affairs minister, told the country's Amy Radio, or Army Radio, Anyone who sees the Iranian threat as a significant threat is responsible that he, he or she will take various steps, including these, to harm it. So he's basically saying, yeah, we did it, and, uh, well, if it gets out anywhere else, that's not really our problem. 
you know, they're just protecting their interests, or, or so they say. But in the meantime, this could cause untold problems for Iran, and they may retaliate, which would then cause Israel to retaliate. And basically, this is just more provoking, more poking the stick at the bear and seeing if they'll do anything in return. So far, Israel, uh, so far, Iran has yet to retaliate on that. Moving on to a weird story out of Wisconsin. Pastor sentenced to two years in prison for teaching that parents should spank their children. Oh, man, this is crazy. A minister named Philip Caminetti was sentenced to two years in prison for simply teaching that parents should spank their children when they misbehave. He was quoting a Bible verse, Proverbs 13, 24. And after prison, he's going to be on extended supervision for six years. And despite objections on constitutional grounds from his lawyers, this man wasn't even spanking children. He was just saying, hey, if your children gets out of line, if your child gets out of line, you should spank them. Okay, because that's why we have kids running around here in this country who aren't well behaved, who are delinquents and, and doing all kinds of crazy stuff because their parents didn't raise them right. Okay, probably because they didn't spank them because they were told spanking was bad. Yeah, well, that's a big First Amendment issue. I feel really bad for this judge, Marianne Sumi, who was absolutely horrified that someone should spank their kids when they misbehave. I mean, it's just ridiculous. But just a sign of the times of where we're going. Moving back abroad, West Hula's Syrian narrative crumbles, expels diplomats anyway, and this is from Tony Cartolucci. And it, it basically shows two contradicting reports. The UN said that uh, most of the 108 victims of the massacre in Hula last week were shot at close range and that they were, their arms were bound and there were women, children, children, and entire families were gunned down in their own homes. Well, it, that's a complete opposite of what the UK foreign minister, Alastair Burt, was saying. He was saying, we are appalled at what appears to be credible reports that the Syrian regime is responsible for the deaths of the 92 civilians in Hula. And he was saying that uh, artillery tank shells were being used. And, it, and if that's the case, it's a pure act of naked savagery and we condemn it. And they started kicking out um, the foreign minister from Syria out of the UK office. And uh, but then the UN's obviously has a different report. And actually, when photos came out, you could see that people's arms were being bound. There was no way that this was shelling done from uh, from a faraway location. These people were gunned down at close range. But instead of looking at the actual credible report, they're going off a report that they got from some unknown person and using that as a, as a um, premise to kick out the Syrian foreign minister. We're appalled at what appears to be credible reports that the Syrian regime has been responsible for the deaths of 92 civilians in Hula, including 32 children. The UN head of mission has been able to confirm the numbers um, and also that artillery tank shells have been used. If this is the case, then it's an act of pure naked savagery, and we condemn it in the most str in the strongest possible terms. So clearly nobody was actually making attempts to follow up on these reports and make sure that they were credible, but it's just another indication that any use, any reason NATO can use to go after Syria and start the next theater of war there, just like we did in Lebanon, or not, I'm sorry, just like we did in Egypt, and then Libya, now we're going to go into Syria, and then Iran, and then, you know, it's World War III. Wow. Finally tonight, <clears throat> Poland beekeepers kicked Monsanto out of the hive, successfully banned bee-killing GM corn. A significant health freedom victory has taken place in the European nation of Poland, where all plantings of Monsanto's MON810, a genetically modified variety of maize that produces its own BT insecticide in every kernel, has been officially banned. The decision comes after thousands of protesters recently took to the streets, good job, polls, and a demonstration of the undeniable fact that both chemicals, that both MON810 and the chemicals cause colony collapse disorder, a worldwide phenomenon in which entire swarms of honeybees disappear or turn up dead. And a lot of this has been based on the independent research of Pennsylvania beekeeper John McDonald, who had his research taken up and burned because Monsanto didn't like it. They don't want anybody talking about any of their products in a bad light at all. And I really, this really makes me happy that the polls kicked these guys out. And this on a day when the president uh, referred to a Nazi death camp as a Polish death camp today. Good job, Obama. And finally, our quote of the day comes from Joan of Arc, and she said, 
I am not afraid. I was born to do this. And what was she born to do? Well, she was born to kick the English out of her country. And this is back in the 1400s. I'm going to go over some quick facts here on Joan of Arc. She was um, born in 1412, and then about the age of 13, she started hearing the voices of St. Michael, the Archangel, St. Catherine, and St. Margaret, who told her she needed to basically help get the English out of France and that she must lead Charles the uh, Seventh on his coronation. So she journeys um, up into France from her. She was on the eastern side of France. She journeys into the capital to help lead the armies. At 17, she is uh, asked to lead the armies. She helps lift the siege of Orleans in 1429. Then, and what she earned the name, um, the Maid of Orleans. And then uh, she won her greatest military victory at Pate in June 18th of 1429. She annihilated English forces, killing over 2,000 while suffering almost no losses. She was then later wounded at a fight and captured by the Burgundies, the Burgundine soldiers, and they turned her over to the English. And they sold her, I think, for it looks like 10,000 gold francs. She was put on trial there. She did not want to deny that she was hearing voices of, of, of those archangels. She wouldn't do it. Finally, at the very end, with threat of rape, she did recant and she was burned at the stake on May 30th of 1431. Her last words were, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And, um, and then many years later, her trial was overturned. And now we celebrate St. Joan of Arc Feast Day, which is May 30th, which is today. So there you go. That's why we had that quote from Joan of Arc. And it just shows what one person can do. Coming up, we're going to talk to another person who just decided he was fed up with the TSA and what they do. He started a WordPress page, started making videos, and now he's testifying in front of Congress and sending petitions to the Supreme Court. His name's John Corbin, and he'll be right up after this. Don't forget, if you're watching this on YouTube, you need to become a Prison Planet member. You can do that by going to uh, InfoWarsNews.com or PrisonPlanet.tv. Also, we have a free social network that you can join. It is Planet InfoWars, and it has all this amazing stuff. There's the cool graphic. We have today, we had a video that was shot with one of our moderators today talking about all the things that are going on with Bilderberg. So get out there, get involved, become a member of Planet InfoWars, become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv, and let's help take it to the next level. We're already getting there with your help, and we sure do appreciate it. Coming up next, John Corbett of TSA Out of Our Pants. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. For more than six years, I've talked on the air about creating a social network. PlanetInfoWars.com is in its beta phase. We're just launching it, and I want to invite all of you out there to be in on the ground level. Planet InfoWars is about people coming together, forming activist organizations, getting involved politically, hunting and fishing, gardening, dating. This is a place for people who love freedom to meet and to talk and to write and to post information. And I give you this pledge. We are not gonna spy on you and sell your data to the new world order. PlanetInfoWars.com is free, so people who love freedom can get together. Connect with people who are awake and know what we're facing. Be active, organize, take action, go viral, create, contribute, resist, because resistance is victory. You are victory. It's waiting for you to breathe power into it. PlanetInfoWars.com Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. 
doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew, sitting in while most of the crew is out on the road in Bilderberg protesting. But um, it's my pleasure to bring to you today as our guest, John Corbett from the blog TSA, Out of Our Pants. And he's been writing on this for, for a while now, and one of the cool things he did was make a video about how to bypass the body scanners, which has uh, led him to even go up to Congress and speak in the midst of the esteemed John Pistol and other such luminaries, <clears throat> other such public servants that should be doing our bidding, not us doing their bidding. And uh, he also, we covered an article yesterday, TSA Viper teams and CBP agents spotted patrolling music festival. That was in Detroit where I guess he lives and is a music producer. So here he is now. Let's say hi to him. Hey, John, how's it going? Hey, Rob, doing well. Excellent. So tell us about this Detroit Music Festival that you um, went to the other day and how you were, were shocked to see federal agents. Yep. So I'm actually just a visitor in Detroit. I, li I live in Miami, my first time there. But they, they throw a music festival, uh, electronic music, every, uh, every Memorial Day for the last uh, you know, several years. Um, so so I, I went there and I, I was pretty surprised to find, uh, when I walked out of the festival, uh, a bunch of TSA uh, agents, armed law enforcement TSA inspectors, uh, and inside the festival, armed border patrol agents. That is not surprising. I've, we've seen border patrol and we've documented border patrol agents setting up their checkpoints well more. And, you know, they said to you, 50 miles inland. They're over 100 miles inland in Texas and in Arizona and you know, all the, the southern border states, they're, they're crawling. They, they go wherever they want. They want your papers. They want to know what you're doing, who you're with, where you're going, ask you 20 questions, and they shouldn't even be anywhere but at the border. Correct. You know, it, the music festival wasn't far from the border at all. Um, but, but the question is, what, what kind of border-related activity is going on inside a music festival? And the answer is, of course, none. Um, but but these, these agents seem to think that they have... Um, the authority, and, and, and perhaps they do, perhaps they don't, uh, to go wherever they want and, and to, to question wherever, whoever they want. And so you questioned a couple of the border agents asking them why they were there. What did they say to you? That's correct. So they, they basically told me that, um, you know, they're, they're within 50 miles of the border, so they can, they can patrol wherever they want, um, that they enforce both state and federal law, and, and that um, basically if, if you don't like it, too bad. <laughs> yeah. Too bad for you, you're living next to, I guess there's a river separating Canada and the U.S. over there in Detroit. I was, I was there uh, a couple years ago filming some of the despair in that city. And then not too long ago interviewing um, Kurt Haskell, who saw the, uni or the, I said the Unabomber, the underwear bomber, get on the plane back in uh, Steeple Airport. Right. Um, let's go to the TSA, which is the reason now why we have them everywhere is because of the underwear bomber. Um, you also saw TSA agents, including some of them that were armed, which is pretty new. I didn't know they were allowed to be armed. So uh, did you encounter them? Did you talk to them? What happened? Correct. So, so most TSA screeners are not permitted to be armed. They're, they're not law enforcement officers, the kind that you see in the airport with the blue uniform. Uh, they're not police. They don't carry guns. But the, the TSA is allowed to, to train and to, and to have law enforcement. Enforcement operators, officers, uh, rather that they call it TSA inspectors, uh, and these men essentially wander around um, carrying firearms, uh, and you know, ostensibly tell me that they were looking at the train tracks that are by the festival. But, but again, that, that's the rub is that um, you know the, the Transportation Security Administration says they can do anything transportation related. related. Um, but where is there not something transportation related? And same with Border Patrol, they say they can patrol within 100 miles of the border. Um, but nearly every major city in the U.S. is within 100 miles of the border, including the entire state of Florida. Um, so it, it, it's, it's essentially um, just, just kind of a, another way of getting around things by, by creating uh, ridiculous exceptions that, that apply uh, as the rule. Sure. Walking can be transportation. You know, your sure. feet are transportation devices. Your shoes are transportation implements. So maybe we need the TSA sniffing our shoes 
to see if we have any bomb parts or other such incendiary devices in them. I think it's crazy. Um, did, did you talk to anybody at, with this Detroit Music Festival? Did they know that they were going to have these types of guys there? And did they have their own private security there on hand? You know, they, they had their own private security, and there were, there were local police there as well. I think the, the idea is that the festival is held on uh, park grounds. Um, and the, the city of Detroit, being, being in its current state, basically takes all the help it can get. So they, they essentially give the, T, the TSA or the Customs or, or whatever federal agents want to come free reign over the city to, to go wherever they want. That, uh, that, that doesn't mean that, that this has to be that way. So I, I am definitely um, contacting the festival organizers and seeing what we can do uh, to, to prevent this from happening next year. Um, you know, just, just like any, any other kind of private property or private event, the, the, the event uh, uh, organizers should be able to exclude whoever they want, absent any kind of law enforcement emergency. Uh, and I, I think they need to do so. I, I don't think that, that a bunch of federal agents is what people want when they're around when they're having a good time. No, we see enough of those guys at the airport digging through our luggage and asking us a bunch of questions and treating us like criminals. So I don't think we need them at our music festivals. I was at a festival uh, this weekend as well, and we didn't have any cops. There was two sheriff's deputies on the outside of the gate. Never saw them inside, never saw any uniformed police officer other than what they call rangers walking around. And uh, they basically just are there to help conflict re resolution and provide first aid and directions if you need them. Right. And, you know, that's what it should be because it's called personal responsibility. And that's the code that we should be living by in order to change the way we live now, which is this idea that the government has to carry us around on their back and cradle us from uh, cradle to grave. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let's move on. You actually went to D.C. Um, when was that, last week? Correct. I was in D.C. last uh, Monday and Tuesday. Okay. And you actually attended the uh, TSA's Aviation Security Advisory Committee's public meeting. Uh, did they strip search you on the way in? <laughs> uh, no. The, the only thing reminiscent of the, of the actual TSA is they had those little mats with the feet drawn on them so that you can, you can stand on them when they pat you down. Um, but they, they had private security guards. They, they had the little handheld metal detection wands with the TSA has gotten rid of in favor of the pat downs. Um, so it, it was a highly secure building, I would say, but, uh, but, but none, of the, uh, none of the stuff they subject us to at the airports to get in. Right. And so what happened uh, during your presentation? Who was there? Who was in attendance? And what actually did you present? So I actually had, had three, uh, three things to do in D.C. The, the first was the TSA's um, uh, Aviation Security Advisory Committee meeting, which was which is on TSA headquarters and now uh, for the first time actually consists solely of uh, industry representatives, of, of, of industry stakeholders such as, as airlines and pilots associations and so forth. And this, this committee is tasked with, with uh, advising the TSA on a, on, a, on a range of issues as to what they should be doing uh, and how they should be implementing it. Um, Administrator Pistol came for, for about five minutes uh, to give his own speech, but then uh, suddenly left, as, as he's done actually with, with every ASAC meeting that I've seen, uh, basically ignoring the committee and, and not giving the time of day to it. So uh, at, at the end of the meeting, they're, they're required by, by, by law or by regulation to have uh, open comment. Um, so there, there were actually a few of us, uh, not, not just me, that, that were able to give comments and to, to share that uh, we as, as the traveling public expect this committee uh, that, that is, you know, the people that were paying to travel uh, to, to take action on these, these privacy issues, on, on the invasiveness of the TSA. And did you actually show them the shirt and video that, that you were able to sneak the metal object past the TSA screening device? Um, apparently they had all actually seen it. Uh, I, I did mention it. I had several come up to me saying that they, they did see the video. Okay. Um, I, I also had a, a second presentation the next day, uh, which was directed at Congress to, to a bunch of staffers in, in, in the House. And, and during that, we, we did kind of go through the video and uh, explain to Congress exactly what kind of flaws uh, we've seen, both, both the one that was in my video and, and others. The scanners have uh, a plethora of flaws. There are so many ways to defeat them that um, it's astounding, and this, this game just did not exist with the metal detector. If you take a piece of metal through a metal detector, it'll, it'll beep every time. It doesn't matter what you case it in, surround it with, where you put it on your body, um, it, it will beep every time. The same can't be said of these new body scanners. Right, but then that doesn't, um, but then it won't catch those bombs that are sewn into the breasts or the stomach of, of all these terrorists that are just waiting to come kill us through the airline industry. Right, and then you know, if, if those do actually exist, we've, we've actually not seen someone uh, depart from a U.S. airport with uh, explosives with the intent of, of blowing up a plane since the 60s. 
Uh, but, but if these people do exist, there are other ways to catch them. Uh, number one on the list is, is bomb-sniffing dogs. Uh, number two are, are trace detection machines, either the, the little swab things that they have now or those puffer machines that they used to have um, that they got rid of because their employee manufacturing started to break. Um, the bottom line is if, if you have a bomb in your underwear, you have a whole bunch of trace residue all over your body, and that can be detected, and it doesn't require uh, a machine that takes your clothes off. Exactly. And, and dogs don't cost nearly as much as these TSA machines or having all those TSA screeners yelling at you. In fact, I think they, uh, someone did a, a study, and I think one dog could replace all those machines in there and, and, and screen people in half the time. So, Absolutely not. I mean, if you can imagine a line, a line full of uh, 100 people and a dog passing by, how long it would take the dog to, to walk by 100 people, it would be you know, several seconds. Yeah. Uh, compared to these body scanners that, that take about 15 seconds if there's no anomaly, but 40% of the time they need to pat you down anyway. Um, so that, that's why in a lot of airports you'll see that they're still using the metal detectors for most people. Uh, and you know, roughly, depending on the airport, maybe 10 to 50 percent of people end up going through the body scanners, even if they're, they're fully equipped with them. Um, they just take so long that, that they, they aren't an effective solution. Yeah, I actually shot video myself of this. Every time I go to the airport, I always stop and check my watch for about 35 to 45 seconds while I'm filming. And um, you know, I've on many occasions have witnessed people coming out of the scanners, and then they get patted down, and it happens just about every time I've flown. And once they, you know, it doesn't matter. You've gone through the scanner here, now I'm gonna fill you up. And they'd give them just as much of a pat down as, they, as you get if you were not gonna go through the scanner. So it's a big lie that they tell you that those are gonna, that those pat downs are gonna go away with the scanners. Right, so, so one of the things that we can all do to try and, and limit the amount of body scans they can do is, is to opt out in the first place. Um, you know, if they're gonna, if you're gonna have a 40% chance they're gonna touch you anyway, you might as well just go up and say, I opt out, and they'll, they'll pat you down. Um, the, these, these full pat-downs that they do take, uh, you know, by the time they actually move you and explain the process and so forth, about three to five minutes, which isn't enough to, to cause you to miss your flight, um, but it's, it's enough to make it so that the TSA can't continue to do it. Um, the TSA has approximately seven to ten seconds to screen every passenger in order for them, there to not be a delay and not to be a backup. Um, so if, if even three, four, five percent of passengers ask to opt out, uh, essentially, the machines would have to be stopped using. Um, they, they'd have to stop using uh, uh, all the machines. They'd have to stop the pat downs, and they'd have to go back to, to the metal detectors. That would be great. I can't wait for that. And also, you uh, uh, put a petition into the Supreme Court. Uh, let's tell us about that, and tell us about the weird uh, requirements that they made you go through in order to get that petition submitted. Uh, uh that's correct. So I, I sued the TSA about a year and a half ago uh, when these, these body scanners were moved to primary uh, in, in November of 2010. And so far, courts have refused to hear it because there's a law that essentially says that any, anything the TSA orders uh, um, it needs to be appealed in the courts of appeals and can't be subject to a, a district court trial. Uh, and their district court is the trial court that has all the juries. Uh, discovery and witness stands and all that kind of stuff. So essentially, um, the law would be forcing me to go into an appeals court where I'd have no right to a trial by jury, where I'd have no right to discovery, to gather and present evidence or present witnesses, uh, essentially limiting due process. So I'm challenging the constitutionality of that, and that went up to the Supreme Court. Uh, I filed that on Tuesday. And the, the following requirements for the Supreme Court are actually pretty interesting. Um, it it seems, seems random and arbitrary. Uh, to start at the paper that you use has to be six and, and an eighth inch by, by nine and a quarter inches, so, so no eight and a half by 11 paper. Um, it has to be bound in a booklet. They specify the exact font you're supposed to use, um, the margins, uh, the, the space between the lines, and uh, even the thickness of the paper. I have to use exactly 60 pound paper in order for it to pass their inspection. Uh, and then when I got to the courthouse to drop off the documents, they, they actually have an interesting method of dropping them off, uh, which is you go out to the back of the courthouse to the security guard stand, which will have, hand you a garbage bag, and you, you place your documents in the garbage bag and, and just leave it there. Um, I, I guess the idea is that since they require so many copies of everything, 40 copies in fact, um, people come up with, with, with giant boxes of, of, of papers, and uh, I guess there's some kind of security risk there, so they screen them out back. Uh, in garbage bags beforehand, but it, it, it just kind of uh, seemed like a, a bad uh, a symbol for, for, for justice to, to, to place documents in a garbage bag and leave them back. Here's your garbage bag, kid. Don't yeah. worry, we're going to take care of it. Trust us. Yeah. R really yeah. makes you feel like it's the people's court and, uh, and not the corporation's court and the corporate court that I think it's now become.
It, it is interesting, but but luckily today I was was notified by the Supreme Court that they they, they did scan the garbage bag and, and I guess opened it up and accepted the petition. So we're, we're now on the docket. Interesting. And do you know when you're going to hear anything on that? Um, well, the, the TSA or the, the government, the Solicitor General and the Attorney General's office will have a chance to respond. Um, and this this is essentially just a petition to ask the court to hear it. Um, so that the court, uh, based on, on my petition and their response, is going to decide uh, whether or not they should actually look at the case. And, and if they do, which which they do for about three percent of cases, so the odds aren't so good. Um, then there'll be more more briefing. There'll be oral arguments, and it'll, it'll be a big thing. Wow. Well, let's hope they decide to take it, and let's hope we can get these the TSA out of our pants, like it says in your blog. One man fighting the TSA. It's John Corbett. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Rob. All right. Hey, it's one person. You could do it too. Just start a blog and start making videos. That's really all it takes. And, you, you know, we saw his video. We thought it was amazing and uh, got him on the show. And now he's, you know, going up to the Supreme Court and talking to people like John Pistol, even though John Pistol is probably not going to listen to him. Uh, that's all the show we have today. If you want more info, check it out at infowars.com. Check out our Bilderberg link. We've got plenty of live stuff on there. Uh, become a member of Planet InfoWars. That's our new social network. It's in beta right now, but we've got a whole Bilderberg group in there going. Um, it's Bilderberg for the rest of the week and into next week. So keep watching. Keep checking out the site. Check out the new drones shot down over um, America. It's either drone shot down over America or drone shot down over Texas. It's become viral. And uh, we will see you tomorrow night. Mike Adams will be hosting the InfoWars Nightly News, and we will see you next time.